Hi, my name is Matthijs Dieriks. I'm a music composer and sound designer for games. I started as a journalist, went to a uh, school of journalism, graduated, ended up being uh, editor and editor-in-chief of a couple of uh, games magazines. And then I started my own uh, publishing company and founded the uh, Dutch magazine for the Dutch games industry. Exciting. It was. A lot of Dutch game developers and, and people in the Dutch games industry read the magazine and we started doing uh, conferences and award shows. And, but there was always this thing in the back of my mind thinking, actually, I don't want to write, just write about games. I want to write music for games. And I started interviewing a lot of uh, Dutch game composers and, um, and and music has always been my... Yeah, that was my question. How did it come into well, your it, life? It, it, it has always been my passion. I got a few piano lessons when I was you know, like seven or eight years old. And after a couple of uh, these lessons, my piano teacher told my mother that money would have been spent better elsewhere. The thing is, I don't like to play other people's music. Uh, and I was you know, like trying to sort of discover the piano myself. And then someone explained to me the really the, the basic principle of Western music, which is just, you know, a chord, three notes, you know, like one, and then you, you count one, two, three, four, five, and then you count one, two, three, four, and then you have a basic major chord, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, you have this uh, a, a minor chord. And that's all the music theory I apparently needed, and I've always felt, you know, like, it, it, it was such a discovery, it, it, it was, you know, like, this adventure, if, if, if you do, you know, like, a C major chord, and then you don't play a C, but a D, it, it sounds completely different and you can do this and you can do that and uh, I, I never stopped playing piano and always making up my own music and when I started uh, studying uh, uh, journalism I bought my first uh, MIDI keyboard and I uh, hooked it up uh, uh, with, the, with the computer and it was a bit rudimentary by then but suddenly there was this, you know, like epiphany. So I can now have the bass play this, and then the violins play that, and then and it's like I can have my own orchestra. And it's like, oh my god, this is this is fantastic. At that point, I never felt this could be something I could do professionally. Up until this moment where I entered uh, in a game jam, which is. Um, it's a global event and you have 48 hours to come up with a game and finish it. And you do this with a, a small group of people. And since I was already involved in the games industry by then for over 15 years or something with the magazine. And you knew everybody by then. I, I knew a lot of people. Yeah. So, so we had this really professional group of, of uh, uh, developers and game designers and artists. And we sat together in a room for, for uh, 48 hours. And I was like, but I'll do the music. And they were looking at me like, you do music? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, I've been doing that all my life. And I was like, okay, you just do music. It's, it's low stakes, it's no, no pressure. And it's, so I, I was making music uh, during the game jam. And at one point they were like, okay, we need to put the music in the game. Let's hear it. And it's like, no. <laughs> That's a, that was the first time that somebody else would hear music, music that yeah. I was writing on my computer. And it's like, okay, just one of you with your headphones on. And he was a, a, a senior developer from a studio somewhere in, in Eindhoven, I believe. And he was listening to it. And I, I remember I was really, really, really nervous. I can imagine, yeah. And he, he took off his headphones and, and he looked at me and said, I didn't know you could actually make music. This is, this is actually really good. And 
really? Yeah, I thought it was good music, but you know, like you you shouldn't be always the judge of your your own music. But and then I put it on the speakers, and and I really vividly remember these these really surprised looks at my in my direction. It's like, yeah, that's actually that's proper music. And that was the first time, it, it's not just to pat myself on the back, but I mean, that, that was the first time I realized that, that, oh, maybe I can pursue this as a career sometime. But I know I still had a lot to learn. And I think it, that it took an additional five or six years before I started but composing. don't reply all my questions at once. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> Because, of course, you, were, you could do this interview to yourself, by yourself, but uh, uh, it must have a point that somebody gave you the chance. Because one thing is they <coughs> like to hear your music and say, wow, this guy is a revelation. But somebody has to give you, like, an important geek, right? How did it go? Well, I cheated a bit. At the end of that game jam, I told uh, the, the, the lead programmers, I've got an idea for a game. Uh, it's a, a math game with numbers, uh, a puzzle game. And I showed it to him and he was like, um, oh, well, that's, that's a nice idea. We, so let's turn it into a proper game. So we spent uh, a couple of months developing it and we also, we ended up releasing it on uh, Android and iOS. And that was the first time I was like, okay, since I came up with the idea, I want to write the theme music for it. And I was like, yeah, go for it. And uh, people um, seemed to like it. And, and it was just a small mobile uh, a game. But then they went on to uh, a, a bigger project. And I was like, I want to do the music. I was like, yeah, yeah, definitely, you do the music. But since I also have this experience in uh, magazines and, and communications, like, but we would also like you to do the PR and marketing. And that made me quite attractive for a studio to have, you know, like sound design, composer, and our own marketing guy in, 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 in one package. Yeah. And marketing is so important in yes. this industry. Yes, yeah. and th th that was uh, the, the second game I did. And uh, based on that, I got the next one. Advertising, not so much, but I wrote uh, some music for some student films. And I kind of like to do that. Um, but games are just, they're so attractive as a composer for several reasons. First of all, because um, to me, as, as, a, as a gamer, I'm, I'm a, an avid gamer as well. How many hours do you play? And, Can we know? I used to play really, you know, like 20, 30 hours a week at least. Nowadays, slightly less, but I still like to. to it was your job, so yeah, it's totally yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to me, you know, like, uh, music was always such an integral part of the experience, and I, I always felt like, oh, I, I wish I could be, I, I could provide that for other players, and you know, like the the the, the moment you start a game and hear the main theme. And, and see the visuals, and when that comes together, that, that, that's sort of a, a special feeling that's only with, uh, with games. Because in a movie, um, after two hours, it's gone. It's, uh, you, you may remember the music, and it's very important, and I love film music a lot, uh, uh, but, with games, you, you, especially the games that I've been working on, people tend to play those games for hours and hours and sometimes even three or four hundred. We had something, uh, someone playing the last game for over twelve hundred hours. So they listen to your music a lot. And I hope it's they keep iterating during the process. <laughs> yes, yes. 
obviously I, I'd like to do a full movie once, but I, I'm already 50, almost, almost. So uh, I'm, I'm, it's, um, on the one hand, I feel I'm, I'm at the beginning of a new career yeah. and I feel young. <laughs> at the same time, you have to be realistically and you know, like, I don't have another 20 years to get there. I, I would be 70. Yeah, well, well maybe, maybe, maybe it's still possible. You had no education and you wanted to try out this, uh, the composing and you have these first gigs. Did you have to learn any skill, anything oh, that was yeah. lacking for you to perform these jobs? Oh, say? Um, I'm still learning. I'm still, you know, like phoning the, the, the other composers. How does this work? How, do, how should I do that? And, and you know, I've got this pool of, of knowledge that I can tap into because I know them from my time when I was interviewing them. And uh, they're really, really nice people. They're always willing to help. Uh, but the, on the one hand, you, you get very far from just you know, like having listened to uh, the music for uh, well, 20 years. The gaps, you, you just have to, to find out, you have to learn and you have to be a bit stubborn to think that you can do it. It's, it's not that you're bluffing, but you have to just to be a bit... Put yourself uncomfortable somehow. Uh, yeah. yeah. I learned so much and I, don't, I liked learning. Um, so uh, I, I thought it was just, you know, like this other big adventure. And especially with the last game, in the beginning, it, it was very difficult because a, a couple of the team members really didn't like the music I made. Uh, and I know n now I understand why, because I was trying to please them from the beginning. And they were talking about music in a way that I didn't understand completely. And I think we were speaking in the same language and so I, w I felt like I'm literally making what you are describing and at one point I, I got a bit nervous and at one point I was like okay I'm gonna forget everything that you are saying I'm just gonna write a piece of music I think would fit the game and plays to my strength so I did that and put it in the game and they were like yeah this is what we meant this is fantastic this is great music absolutely great i was like you should have told me from the beginning but it's that that's i think an, a, a skill you need to acquire as a media composer is that you have to understand what your clients or, or your other team members are actually saying because they say for instance they give you something that they like a music that they like and they think would fit the game and then you listen to the music and then it's uh, with synthesizers and you think oh they must like synthesizers so you use synthesizers and, and that's, no no that's not what i mean and to me it's like it's, it's almost the same but in the end they meant the uh, a nostalgic feel to the music or, or, or it's much more the, the 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 feel than the kinds of instruments mm -hmm. so it's it's sometimes it's it's difficult to to sync with your uh, uh, team members but when you do and it grows the 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 the, the connection grows you start to bounce off each other and then and, and they're like, oh, the, the, the game is actually sounding better now than it looks, so we have to improve the looks. And then it's like, oh my God, this, this game looks so amazing, so I have to push myself even further. And then you get this really great uh, creative collaboration. And that in, in, in the end, we became, especially the art director and myself, we, we are really big fan of each other. So, and that, 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 that works really. Well, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget, there's more to watch.